Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. I don't know if I'm live yet. I'm trying to stay ahead of the broadcast because I don't want y'all to just be sitting here looking at me, look at my phone. <laughs> I'm literally trying to make sure that I am on time. I'm on time. Thank you all for joining. Um, I am in the process of sharing out this broadcast. So if you know anyone that you believe would benefit from this information, please, please, please share out this broadcast. So what I am doing during the month of March is providing clarity surrounding consumer law. Yeah, I'm, I'm such a nerd. I'm a nerd. I know. It's all good, though, because I'm going to get this information out and y'all going to be nerds right along with me. Hold on one second. Let me make sure that this is being shared to the proper channels. This needs to be shared to the appropriate groups. Um, make sure that all my people are getting the information on consumer law. Yes, join in on the discussion. So if you do not know who I am or if you are new to me, my name is Tamara T. Bush. I am not an attorney, nor am I providing legal advice. I am just simply hopping on um, during the month of March to help provide clarity surrounding consumer law so that you can be well informed of your rights and how to properly assert yourself as a consumer. So if you can see me, if you can hear me, please, please, please put a one in the chat. I wanna make sure that I'm visible to all of you that you can hear my audio. Um, and don't forget to drop your city and state so that I know where you are tuning in from. Need to know where you're tuning in from because that is going to enable me to put together some events in your area because we will be going on the road um, teaching this information and we'll be um, coordinating some events near you. So we just want to make sure that you are taken care of, that you get information that you need, and everything is going to be all good. It's going to be all right. It is going to be all right. So definitely, definitely share out this broadcast. Right. So today, I want to circle back to, I've, I've covered a variety of topics, right? But this, this one thing that I feel as though I can provide even more clarity on is the definition of a finance charge. Um, because this is part of the reason why um, we don't realize that we're being violated, right? Because when we go to get a loan or we get a credit card, or even if we go to buy a new phone that we're financing, right? Through Verizon, T-Mobile, whomever, there's that little box on your contract that says finance charge, right? And so the companies are supposed to explicitly explain to you the calculation of a finance charge and they do not. 99.99999% of the time, they are not explaining this box. So I'm going to explain it to you so that you know exactly what you're supposed to be looking for. And you're going to know how they violate you because yes, they're violating you by withholding information. You're going to know. So let me go ahead and share my screen this Monday, y'all. I'm a little goofy. I had a long day. I'm just, whew, it's just been a long day. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to keep myself entertained. <laughs> but I hope that you all are doing very well out there. I hope and pray that everyone has had a blessed day and that you continue to have a blessed day and then you carry that blessing into the rest of your week um, and into this weekend, all right? So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm gonna need you all to please place a two in the chat if you can see my screen. Place a two in the chat if you can see my screen. And I'm looking on my phone as well, just to make sure that you all can see my screen. On my screen, you should see 15 USC 61605. That's 15 USC 1605. I am on the Cornell Law website, and this is the Legal Information Institute. So when you go to look up these laws, it's more than likely going to take you directly to Cornell Law. And this is where you can begin the crux of your research, right? Cornell is the best when it comes to providing all the definitions and everything that we need to um, study. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. So this is truth and lending. 
truth and lending goes from 15 USC 1601 all the way down to 1666. So that is that's basically the range of codes, right? 1601 to 1666 or 1667, I believe. But that is basically um, what you're looking at. So anytime you see 15 USC 1605, just know that you are in the truth and lending subsection of Title 15. All right, so let's get started. Okay, finance charge defined. And you all know that I love giving the definitions because it's written in plain English and black and white. It's just a matter of how we comprehend what was written by Congress. Okay, except as otherwise provided in this section, the amount of the finance charge in connection with any consumer credit transaction shall be determined as the sum of all charges. I want you all to put a pen in the statement right here, the sum of all charges. It says all. So that means everything. That means everything. Some of all charges payable directly or indirectly by the person to whom the credit is extended and imposed directly or indirectly by the creditor as an incident to the extension of credit. The finance charge does not include charges of a type payable in comparable cash transaction. Okay, I'm just gonna stop right there. I am going to stop right there. And I'm already hyped right now, because listen, <laughs> I'm so hyped on this, this topic right now. This one little tiny little itty bitty paragraph in truth and lending we, we, we just gonna break down this paragraph, right? Okay, so what is the finance charge? Okay, so this is how they describe it. The terms annual percentage rate and finance charge shall be disclosed more conspicuously. Anytime that you see the term conspicuously, that means that they have to make it a point to ensure that that information is provided to you separate from the rest of your documentation. Right. So when you go in to close on a mortgage, you go, you go in to close on your car loan, a finance charge is supposed to be a separate piece of paper, separate from the rest of your closing packet. So they're supposed to pull that paper out and say, hey, Ms. Tim, um, um, Ms. Bush, here is an explanation of your finance charge so that you fully understand. Do they do that? Do they do that? Yes or no, do they do that? It says more conspicuously than other terms, data or information provided in connection with a transaction, except information related to the identification of the creditor. Okay, let's go back. Now, the amount of the finance charge in connection with any consumer credit transaction shall be determined as the sum of all charges. Okay, so what are, what are some of these other charges that they're talking about because when we think about a finance charge, we're thinking, okay, the amount that we're actually financing, right? Now, if you look at your truth and lending disclosure, it's going to say the amount that your credit costs you, that's going to be in that little itty bitty box. It'll be in the little box. It'll say the amount that your credit costs you, right? So basically, the way that most people understand it is going to be the amount that your credit is going to cost you throughout the duration of your contract until that account is either paid in full, right? Or if you have a revolving account, a credit card, it's going to be the amount based on the amount that you have um, charged for that particular month, right? They charge you interest or finance charge, right? Okay, so let's scroll down. The finance charge does not include charges of a type payable in a comparable cash transaction. It says does not include in a type payable in a comparable cash. Why are they mentioning cash? Why are they mentioning cash here? Because when you go to buy a house, you go to buy a car, what is it that they're asking you for? What are they asking you for? They're asking you for a down payment. But what does the law say? The law says that it does not include cash. <laughs> so what does that say? That means that it doesn't include your down payment. What you're financing does not include your down payment. So why are you asking me for more money than what I was approved for? Why? 
The finance charge shall not include fees and amounts imposed by third party closing agents, including settlement agents, attorneys, and escrow and title companies. If the creditor does not require the imposition of the charges or the services provided does not retain the charges. Now, think about this for a second. What does it say? The finance charge shall not include fees and amounts imposed by third party closing agents. And sometimes I have to read this twice to drive home the point, right? including settlement agents, attorneys, and escrow and title companies, if the creditor does not require the imposition of the charge, the imposition of the charge, what charges are being imposed on you? Okay, when you go to buy a house, what do they say in a mortgage transaction, right? If you are not financing a certain amount of that house and you fail to meet a certain requirement, what do they say? Oh, you have to pay PMI, private mortgage insurance. The private mortgage insurance protects the lender in case of default, right? It doesn't protect you as the homeowner, it protects the lender. So then explain to me why you're having to pay those fees. And why are they not considered a part of the finance charge if the finance charge is the sum of all charges? Isn't PMI a charge? Isn't PMI a charge? It's an, it's an additional charge. Okay, okay, another example. Okay, so what happens when you go to the car dealership and you buy a brand new car and they say, oh, well, you have to, even if it's not a brand new car, even if it's not a brand new car, what do, what do they make you do if you go and apply for a loan and you get approved for a vehicle? They require you to get insurance. You cannot drive off of that lot until you have secured some form of insurance. For newer models, you have to have full coverage. <laughs> you have to have full coverage, not liability. You have to have full coverage. Okay. so. That is an imposition of a charge. Examples of charges which are included in the finance charge are the following types of charges which are applicable. Okay, the first one we know, interest, time price differential, and any amount payable under a point, a discount, or other system or additional charges. Service or carrying charge. Okay, so these we know, we know these a fee for an investigation or a credit report. Maybe, maybe, sometimes maybe, maybe. Okay, <laughs> look at number five. What does it say? A premium or other charge for any guarantee or insurance protecting the creditor against the obligor's default or credit loss. Okay, so isn't that private mortgage insurance? Isn't that auto insurance? This right here is what we need to be concerned about. Because if the definition of the finance charge is the sum of all charges, then why isn't the insurance premiums included as part of the finance charge? It's supposed to be. That's the whole point. It's supposed to be included as a part of the finance charge. It's supposed to be. Now, I want you to pay attention because next time, if anyone, anyone is going to a dealership, now you all know, you all know that I am against, <laughs> I am against you walking into a dealership and applying for a loan directly with the dealership. I am against that for many, many reasons, many reasons. My recommendation always, always, always is to go into your credit union or go into your bank, apply for for your loan with the credit union or your bank, you get your pre-approval, you get your check and you go shopping, right? That's one inquiry. You go into the dealership to go get a car, they are literally shopping your credit to all of these different people. I had a client that has 73 inquiries on his credit report from a dealership. He went to go and purchase a semi-truck. 73 inquiries and they straight up lied to him at the dealership and told him that he was only going to have one inquiry 
So guess what? 73 inquiries on his credit report means that 73 different companies got paid as a result of that dealership shopping his credit. Because what did I say before? If you have an inquiry on your credit report, that is evidence that a consumer credit transaction has taken place. You may not have gotten paid any money, but somebody did. Somebody got paid. You just didn't get paid. Anyway, I digress. Let me go back to what I was saying. <laughs> All right, premium or other charge for any guarantee of insurance. Okay, I'm gonna let me see if I can pull up a truth and lending statement or um, a truth and lending disclosure because I really need for you all to see what I mean when I say that this is supposed to be included. Hold on, I'm not making this up. This, this is. I, I, I cannot make this stuff up. I can't make it up. The law literally says that it is supposed to be included that the finance charge is the sum of all charges. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay, so this is this is what you're going to be looking for. And let me know if you all can see this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, finance charge. And this is what they all look like. It says the dollar amount that your credit will cost you, amount financed. Okay, total of payments, the amount you will have paid after you made all of your payments as scheduled. Total sale price, the total cost of your purchase on credit, including your down payment. So this person put down a down payment of $1,300. Okay, they have the total cost of your purchase as $27,073.60. Okay, but you have to pay attention to what's in this box right here, which is the finance charge. Because what happens is if they do not clear and conspicuously explain to you what this box means, which is what the law says. What does the law say? Let's go back to the law. Hold on. The law says, what does it say? Sum of all charges. The sum. The sum. The definition. Information required by the subchapter shall be disclosed clearly and conspicuously in accordance with the regulations of the Bureau. When they're talking about the Bureau, they're talking about the CFPB, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. That's, that's, that's the Bureau that protects all the consumers, right? Okay. So why do they never explain this box? They never explain that box. Let me see if I can find another one because there's, 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 a, there's a section on your truth and lending disclosure that actually has a section for the insurance premium. And every single time you go to finance something, they never complete the section. They just put NAs all the way down that box. Every single time, they just put NA, 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 as if, it not, as if it's not applicable. That box is there for a reason. That box is supposed to be filled out. That box is supposed to be filled out. Okay, so what does it say? Here it is right here, insurance, look at this. The following insurance is required to obtain credit. Okay, so this is for a house, obviously, because it has credit life insurance and credit disability, property insurance, flood insurance, private mortgage insurance. Okay, so when you go to finance a mortgage and they're in the, in the, the lender is imposing an additional charge on you that is supposed to be included in a finance charge. It's supposed to be included. It's supposed to be included. And so basically what's supposed to happen is, let's take a, a car loan, for example. When you go to the dealership to go purchase your vehicle and they know that the insurance is supposed to be included as part of the finance charge, they are literally supposed to ask you who do you wish to do business with? Meaning, tell us what insurance company you wanna do business with so that we can collect the premium information on your behalf and include it as part of the finance charge. 
we are not supposed to be paying separately for car insurance. We are not supposed to be paying separately for homeowners insurance. We are not supposed to be paying separately for private mortgage insurance. The law says that it is the sum of all charges. It's the sum of all charges. That's what a finance charge is. Right here, the sum of all charges. Payable directly or indirectly. Directly or indirectly by the person to whom the credit is extended and imposed directly or indirectly by the creditor as an incident to the extension of credit. That means that you can't get the extension of credit unless you do X. That's what that means. And it's supposed to be included in the finance charge. Whew. Come on, y'all. Put a four in the chat if you hear me. Put a four in the chat if you hear me and you understand. Because what's going to happen is, is that you all are going to start going into these transactions, these closings differently. You're going to go in with more information than what you previously had. You're going to go in with more information than what you previously had. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to tell you what the penalty is. Listen, this is, we're, we're still in truth and lending. Look, 1601, all right, down to 1616, we are still in truth and lending. Okay, so what does this section say right here? 1611, criminal liability for willfully, for willful and knowing violation. Now, keep in mind, that these companies are not in the business of losing money. So it does not benefit them for them to um, conspicuously disclose what the finance charge is because do you really think that they wanna pay for your insurance? They don't wanna pay. So that's what they don't tell you, all right? So when we go into 15 USC 1611, criminal liability for willful and knowing violation. get false or inaccurate information or fails to provide the information which he is required to disclose. It says it right there. Failure to comply shall be fined not more than $5,000 or imprisoned, okay? So that's, that's a criminal liability. So it's not just civil, that's a criminal liability. But the problem is, is nobody is going to jail because we're not holding them liable. <laughs> we are, we're not holding them responsible. We are not holding them responsible, right? Pay attention to your documentation. Read your documentation. Ask questions. Do not allow these people to rush you through a transaction. This is literally your life. All this, all this additional money that we're paying off for absolutely nothing. So let me run it back. Let me run it back because I went over the fact that everything that we go and get is paid for with our signature. Our signature literally creates the security and it creates the debt, right? Now, if you walk into a dealership and you sign a promissory note, the vehicle is already supposed to be paid for. It's already paid for. So if the finance charge is a sum of all charges, that means that your insurance premium is a part of the finance charge and that's supposed to already be paid for as well. Any additional imposition of a charge is supposed to be rolled into the finance charge. I, I mean, I didn't make this up. It says premium or other charge for any guarantee or insurance. Protecting the creditor. What does auto insurance do? Yes, it protects you. But the thing of the matter is, is, is also it protects the creditor because what's going to happen if you can't get your car fixed? Most people is going to stop making the car payment. They won't keep making a car payment on a vehicle, that's a total loss that they don't have anymore, that they can't drive anymore. Right? It says, or other credit loss, that's a credit loss. 
that is a credit loss. So yeah, the definition of a finance charge. So we have to start paying attention to these things. And it's just gonna continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper. And I know it seems like it's a rabbit hole. It's a lot of information. And that's why we have to study these laws in sections. We literally have to study them in sections. Um, and I promise you, I promise you, if you continue to study, even if you study the same information over and over, you will eventually know these laws by heart. I'm still getting there. I'm still getting there. Some of them I know, but I have to even pull it up for my own edification when I go back and read. Because they say that you don't really truly gain an understanding of anything unless you read it at least 10 times. And I believe that to be true. That's why it's called studying. You can't just read something once and think that you're gonna have full comprehension of the way that it's supposed to work. That's not how it goes. You have to study and you have to read things multiple times to get the full understanding. So we have got to study. We got to study. We have to start reading. Um, and it's each one teach one, right? We literally have to teach others what we know. Because how else is the information going to get passed on? It's a lot of basic information that's in consumer law that the average person just does not like is they we don't know. <laughs> We just don't know, we don't know it. And that's why I'm here. Because there was one point where I didn't know. Oh, so now you know. But anyway, that was my lesson for today. My name is Tamara T. Bush, hopping on during the month of March to provide clarity surrounding consumer law. I am not an attorney, I am not providing legal advice. I am just simply providing clarity on the laws as I understand it so that you can gain that clarity and take the information and, and use it and apply it to your specific situation. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. Some blessings, everyone. Make it a wonderful evening.